what's it called? A con For a second, that word just sounded totally absurd. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Time Attired. My name is Andrew McCutcheon, and it is my absolute pleasure to be discussing Hamilton with you today. Hamilton is a relatively new brand for Australia, where we're currently based, and that means there's a lot of excitement around the brand, and there's actually a lot of discovery happening around the roots of this brand. And the more you dig into Hamilton, the more you realize the integrity and the authenticity of current watches and this insane back catalogue that is embedded not only with history, but also with film. And a great example of that is the Frogman. Now the Frogman is a modern diver that has very much changed its proportions to modern times, but its roots are right back in World War II when watches were commissioned for the US Navy and they were called US Bushships. I don't know how to pronounce that, B-U-S-H-I-P-S. -S. No matter how you pronounce it, whether it's bush ships or bu ships, the name is a contraction of Bureau of Ships, which was the United States Navy Bureau of Ships. Now these watches were typical military style. They were chrome plated, they were about 31 millimeters. But what was different about this early edition was a canteen style crown. Now this was a very unusual mechanism that actually stopped the ingress of water into the case. And it was, I'm guessing it was, I've researched this, but I'm guessing it's called a canteen style crown because when you look at it and you put it on the side, you can imagine that this looks like the cap of a canteen with its holder attached to the top of the case. Now the modern Frogman collection reinterprets this canteen style crown with this crown guard that you manipulate by unscrewing the crown. And then when you pull the crown out, it slightly pushes out this crown guard and allows you to change the time. And then once you've done that and screwed the crown back in, you can then push the crown guard back in. So it slightly pops out just a mil or two when you are unscrewing that crown. But that's not all from history that's Hamilton-like because the one thing about this brand that's almost uncanny is its ability to not only weave itself through history, but also through film. Now, this is one of those brand values that I assumed was perhaps conflated a little bit, as in, sure, Hamilton's been in some recent movies, some really big recent movies, Pearl Harbor, Interstellar, Tenet, Men in Black. It's been in some really big blockbuster movies, but I wasn't aware or I wasn't convinced that this was something that was authentic all the way back to its history. How's this for a fact? This watch is called the Frogman or Frogman. What I can tell you about this model is that in 1951, which is when the military versions of the Frogman were mass produced for the consumer market, there was a movie that came out called The Frogman and it featured this first edition of the Frogman watch. So there you have it. The two Hamilton attributes at play in this model. Now, of course, a 31 millimeter watch won't play to today's market. And a canteen style crown is certainly something that engineering has improved over the years. So in addition to this very recognizable crown, because if you're looking at someone across the room and you see that crown guard, you're going to be pretty sure that it's a frogman. Let's now get into other specs of this, we can just say, fairly large and fairly in charge Hamilton dive watch. Let's start with the dimensions, which I think is best done by putting it onto a real human wrist. Now my wrist is, as you know from hundreds of videos, it is seven inches almost flush. So we would say a fairly average size wrist. And this is a 46 millimeter diameter watch. Wow, that is very large. <laughs> it's actually not super chunky in terms of height. It is 13.9 millimeters high and the lug to lug is 51.3. So it is not leaving very much wrist real estate on either side of the lug tips, but still within my seven inch wrist. Now for the strap monsters out there and the strap hackers, this is a 22 millimeter lug width. And for the 
really fastidious number crunchers asking and wondering about the distance from the left side of the case to the right side of the case, including the crown guard, it is a whopping 53.5 from here to here. Quite broad, but again, is that actually going to cause me issues like the crown of my big pilot does to me? I can't get there. I can't seem to actually feel that on the inside of my hand. So that's a good thing. Now we have three variations here. We have two with a rubber strap, which is rocking a wave pattern. Now, if you look at that, there is a crimping of this rubber strap that is slightly tilted to look like a wave. But the real purpose of those waves is to provide a slight concertina effect to allow you to potentially get this over your wetsuit. And before we continue into the individual models, we will talk about the uh, specs that are consistent to all, which is also an anti-reflective coating to the sapphire crystal glass and a water resistance across the range of 300 meters. In terms of weight, the models with the rubber strap are 135 grams and this heavy unit here is 219 grams. So a very solid bracelet on the steel bracelet version, which fairly dramatically changes the heft of the watch on the wrist. So let's go through the three individual models of the Hamilton Khaki Navy Frogman 46 millimeters. Now starting with this model, we have a somewhat khaki, sort of gray infused khaki rubber strap. We have a steel bezel with black insert and a red minute hand and red triangle on the tip of the second hand, as well as uh, numeral 12. Now this stealthy number here is in black PVD. We have a black PVD steel case with the PVD continuing to the crown guard and a black crown. We have what I thought was a skeletonized minute and second hand in a previous take, but it's not. It's actually very, very much an optical illusion because this looks like it's skeletonized, but it's not. Uh, we also have black indexes. So legibility on this model is going to be challenging for some. However, at night, this black indexes and our minute and second hand are also loomed. So you will get some nighttime play out of that. This is a fully blacked out model though. All of the diver's markings and numerals on the black bezel are also blacked out. Lastly, the steel bracelet model, which is a whopping 219 grams. And it's actually, I can feel a little bit of tension in my biceps lifting this one. It is that heavy. It is a steel bezel with all silver everything in that bezel. And then once again, we have a red minute hand and red seconds tip on the second hand. And again, I must point out that this is a quality feeling object, but a heavy feeling watch. So if you like heavy watches that are always reminding you they're there, this one will do the trick. So there you have it. We have a modern iteration of the Frogman collection, which dates right back to 1951. We have a reference to that fantastic canteen style crown from those World War II era Navy watches issued to the American army. And we have another movie reference for Hamilton in the movie, The Frogman, where not only was the Frogman model debuted, it was also the first time scuba gear was depicted in a movie. So once again, Hamilton enmeshed in history, enmeshed in movies. What do you think of these watches? Could you pull off 46 millimeters and 13.9 thick? Which model would you go for? So many questions. Thanks for watching Time and Tide. Hopefully you've got some answers today.